Hello everybody and welcome to this video where today we are doing another review and we are going to be doing Loving and Hating Charles Bukowski by Linda King which also has some red wine stains on the pages right there. This book was put out by uh Actually, I don't know who put this book out. Wild Ocean Press, in collaboration with Kiss Kill Press, which I think is Linda's publishing company. This is a strange book. And it's strange because a lot of this is, is stuff you know if you've read Bukowski, for the most part. Um... Because a lot of the things that she brings up in this are almost like uh, her rebuttals to certain stories Bukowski wrote and huge chunks of the book Women that she is like refuting, I guess you could say. For those of you who don't know, the character in Women um, called Lydia Vance is based on Linda King. And they were together for I want to say they were they were probably together together for like two and a half years, but it seems like it lasted off and on more like five um, give or take. Now there are a lot of things in this book that are hysterical. One of them being how close Bukowski actually got to who she really is. Um, a lot of this book just solidifies some of the insanity that Bukowski talked about. So, like, for those of you who, like, read women and were like, there's no way in fucking hell this ever happened, um, you read her, like, account of events, and um, they sure as shit did fucking happen. Everything from her trying to run him over on the sidewalk with her car to her, um, when he had another woman over coming in and beating the shit out of her and then pissing herself and the cops come in to her um, going in and taking all of his books and taking his typewriter and smashing his typewriter in the street because um, they had a phone call where he was just talking to her about a woman he was dating after they had broken up. Now, um, like that story, for instance, that was strange because um, the way Bukowski tells it, she called him and just asked him how he was doing. And he thought they were at a point where they could just have a normal conversation and there wouldn't be like jealousy or insanity or any of this stuff. And she lost her shit. The way she tells it is that whenever he would have a woman over, he would call her up. Like, even after they had broken up, and it's been forever, would call her up and, like, taunt her. Like, guess what I got? I got a woman here, and she's this age, and me and her are going to do it, and all this other shit. So, that part of the story is different, but the way the stories end um, are all the same. The other thing that's funny is that, so, she wrote this book in, what year did this come out? Uh, da, 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 da. 2012. Jesus fucking... Or no. Yeah, 2012. This book fucking came out in 2012. I thought it came out way earlier than that. That's fucking ridiculous. Okay, so this book came out in 2012. And she's recounting events that happened in... Between 1970 and 1975. For the most part. So, what's funny about that is is that <clears throat> not only does she remember 
word for word every conversation she had with every person involved in anything. But she also remembers um, thoughts she had, thoughts that she thought other people had. And um, it's, it's almost laughable how much information she can remember about shit that happened. What would that be? Uh, 10, 20, 30, 40 fucking years prior. It's fucking shocking. So obviously a lot of this you have to take with a grain of salt because there's no way possible for anyone to remember with such great certainty every single fucking instant of everything that happened in any given time. So there's that. The other thing about this that some might find interesting or that some might find fucking annoying is that she intersperses chapters with her poetry that she wrote about certain things, which is fine. Okay. Like some of it is worth reading. Some of it is not. Um, but she also has poems that Bukowski wrote to her that she puts in here, like letters that go back and forth. So that's kind of interesting, but it's, how do I say this? The book is about loving and hating Charles Bukowski and her relationship with him, but she will spend chapters just talking about herself and things that she did without him, like when they were apart, or um, poetry readings that she gave, and um, little things like that. There's nothing wrong with that. Don't get me wrong here, okay? Like, it's interesting to hear about this. But it's strange, because the this says it's a memoir, okay? So it goes from the last time she saw him, which was probably around 1975, to 1994, or... It, no, I think it was still 94 when she found out that he died. And so the last chapter is what I thought it would be with her talking about what his death meant to her. And that was probably the most real that this book gets. It's like the one thing that you won't be able to refute, like what his death meant to her and the poetry she wrote after she found out he died. The thing that's weird about this, and especially about this being a memoir, like, it's kind of like the book is either about her and Bukowski's relationship, or it's a memoir of her life. And I feel like this book tries to be both, but it goes back and forth with what the fuck it wants to be. And one of the things that's weird is because she is so exquisite with every single fucking thing that happened, as soon as he's out of her life, there's like maybe three paragraphs that cover the next 20 years before she finds out that he's dead. And why that's strange to me is that someone who was so fucking articulate with every fucking thing that ever fucking happened in, on the planet... And then he died, or and then he's gone. And like, she moved here, she moved here, she opened a bar, she did this, she did this, and now she finds out he's dead. It's it's strange how that works, and so it kind of leaves you with this impression where you don't know if she really felt like she wasn't much without him, or her life wasn't that interesting without him in it or she didn't think people would find her life interesting if she wasn't talking about him the other side of that is is that throughout the book she has no problem writing chapters about what she did when she wasn't with Bukowski so why all of a sudden now after they finally really break up and split does she not talk about the next 20 years? It's fucking weird. 
So, and the other thing that's weird about that is, is that one of the fights they would always have is her telling him that she's going to be fucking great and he's not that great and he's not even fucking trying and um, like she has potential, but he doesn't have shit and all this other crap. That was a lot of their fighting. And for someone to take that stance and hold that ground to then over the next 20 years not talk about anything they did and that it's just it's fucking bizarre it's really fucking bizarre the thing that sticks out to me more than anything and um kind of made me teary and get kind of emotional is that um like one of the things let me see if there's a picture of it in here i think there is but who fucking knows one of the big things that comes up in Bukowski's writing and in her writing is the head. How they met was she sculpted Bukowski's head. Like, that's not how they met, but that's kind of how shit went down, okay? And when they would break up, they would take the head back and forth. So when he was pissed off, he would give her the head back, you know, and all this other shit. One of the most touching fucking things in this book. 20 years after she had even fucking talked to him again. It turns out in her little writing room at her computer, right next to the computer, she has Bukowski's head. And she talks to it. And it's like he is watching over her writing. And stuff like that. And that got me really emotional dude it was really like a touching bit and I don't mean to like give you like probably the most like sentimental part of the whole fucking book but that right there just that line made the whole fucking book for me um it's just really sweet and uh, like kind of knowing the turmoil of their relationship to hear that last little bit um, kind of just shows um, how much he really meant to her you know It's just really sweet. So anyway, um, loving and hating Charles Bukowski. Um, if you are a fan of Bukowski, I say read it. If you have never read Bukowski and don't give a fuck about Bukowski, this book would probably just sound like angry Twitter rants. So um, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. But anyway, so there's that. Los Angeles got some copies left. Um, pick it up. Um, links down below in my Etsy shop. And um, yeah, other than that, um, keep on keeping on. Type hard and go out and um, keep buying my books, guys. And I'll talk to you later. Bye bye. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon, I appreciate the hell out of you guys, and thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.